Welcome to another Save It For Parts technology review. Today, Viver has sent us a thermal camera. Got a little case for it. I have to say, this seems like a pretty nice box that this comes in. All right, we've got some product information here. Calibration certificate, got a memory card so we can take photos with the unit, manual, and then here is our thermal camera. So this is a pretty big, uh, seems like heavy duty unit. Just right off the bat here, it seems well made. It's got this very nice thick outer casing, lots of rubber on it, lots of bumpers. Got our USB and card slot up here with a very nice protective cover. It's got a tripod mount on the bottom. And they put some thought into this box and packaging. This is definitely something I'll keep around to store the unit. And the case or holster here also comes with kind of a belt or shoulder strap. That's kind of cool for carrying it around on a job site. I have mixed luck with these little screen protectors. Half the time when I go to peel them off, the little removal tab just pulls off and leaves the screen protector behind. I'm gonna go ahead and fire this up. Seems like it takes a few moments to boot up. All right, well, it looks like we start with a visible light image, and it's still doing some initializing or booting there. Okay, so we need to select our language and set our date and time. All right, we are now in thermal mode. The refresh rate on this is pretty good. Frame rate's good. Quality looks good to me. So one of the first things I always look at when I get a hold of a thermal camera are the cats. And yep, we can see our cat is quite warm. This is Mr. Donnie. We have a few pretty standard features on the camera like palette setting. We can change the view of our thermal image. And this just helps bring out different details. Sometimes, depending on what you're looking at, some of these palettes bring out more details in certain respects. And we have quite a few settings in the menu here. We can change our measurement parameters, our scale. We can do alerts. We can change temperature units, date and time, language, brightness, all kinds of stuff on here. Now, interestingly, this goes all the way up to all over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. So this could be pretty useful for scientific stuff, for cooking. I'm not sure if I'll ever actually use a thousand degrees Fahrenheit, but it's possible. Now, as with some other cameras I've seen, we can change this emissivity setting. And that's kind of a correction scale for different materials. So things like glass or wood or metal or plants or animals might reflect or produce thermal radiation slightly differently. There's also a correction table here in the manual that lets you know how to set that for different materials. And I do try to look over the manual for these products, especially when I'm reviewing them. So this one looks pretty good. It's actually printed on decently thick cardstock. It has all the specifications for the device in here. And we have the SC240M, so we'd be looking at this middle column to know what specifications this particular one has. So we've brought the Viver thermal camera out here to Sandland, which is our DIY tunneling project, to show some of its features in a more industrial context. I've previously shown some thermal cameras that clip onto your cell phone, and those are definitely smaller than this, but they're less suited for heavy industrial type use. This SC240M from Viver is a little more rugged, it has some more IP ratings, and it's definitely more suitable to industrial use, commercial use, and use in some more challenging environments, such as underground. And again, I'll make sure to include some screenshots from the unit because it's not the easiest to see it just filming the screen like this. So we'll throw some of those up so you can see what the Viver thermal camera is actually seeing as we go along. Now one thing you'll immediately notice is how visible the tunnel is on the thermal camera. It is a very dark blue, very cold compared to the surrounding summer landscape. And this is actually a good use for this camera. You could go out and look for caves or tunnels with this. You can look for very obvious hotter or colder spots like this. Uh, tunnel temperature in the Midwest here is about 50 degrees year round. So our tunnel air coming out is always gonna be colder than the air in the summer and warmer than the air in the winter. 
as I've mentioned before, these things are also great for finding any air leaks or insulation leaks. For example, I'm looking at our door here that one of the volunteers installed, and this is in the third adit at Sandland. You can definitely see color variations, meaning temperature variations, between all the boards and around the edge of the door. So if we were concerned about um, maximizing our insulation properties, maximizing our airflow properties, uh, we could use the thermal camera here to check out exactly where air is leaking through and exactly where the temperature differentials are. All right, we'll go ahead and go in a little deeper here. There is enough temperature variation on the walls and the tunnel ahead that I can actually walk right down the middle of the tunnel here and not bump into the walls too much without any light. This is much better than a traditional night vision goggle or night vision camera, which still needs some amount of ambient light to work. The thermal camera doesn't need any visible light at all. It just needs slight temperature variations. Now, one thing to note, which I think is common to a lot of thermal cameras like this, when you go from a very warm environment to a very cold environment, the camera body puts off a little bit of infrared radiation. You can see that in that warmer ring that's kind of showing up at the corners of the image. It's not really an issue with the hardware so much as a common issue to any thermal device where it's going to pick up some surrounding radiation from the device itself, from my hand, from anything in the environment that's a little warmer than everything else. We've come down to the sandbar, which is deeper into the Sandland tunnels, and yeah, it's a bit of a mess right now. We're in the process of expanding one of the tunnels in that direction, so this is basically a construction zone, which means it's a perfect place to test out the Viver thermal camera for industrial construction or mining use. I'm also showing off another feature right here. That thermal camera has a standard tripod mount on the base, so you can hook it up to a regular tripod like that and monitor an area long term. So if you're trying to determine hot spots in a construction site, if you're trying to look at your tools to see which ones are overheating, you can just set this up and have it kind of look at the entire area. As I mentioned, we call this the sand bar. It's not really a bar that's open to the public. It's more like a basement rec room taken to silly extremes underground. But if you had a real bar or restaurant or some other establishment that was subject to certain global health concerns in the recent past, or maybe that will happen again in the future, it's kind of nice to have a way to see at a glance the health of your patrons, of your employees, see if anyone has a fever when they report to work. So you could have a thermal camera like this set up right at the entrance when people walk in. Here's another tunnel entrance at Sandland. Even with the door shut, you can definitely see that it's much colder than the surrounding hillside. So yet another great use for a thermal camera like this is wildlife scouting. If you're out in the woods, like Sandland is, then you might want to see deer or bears or whatever else is hanging out in the woods here. And it can be really difficult to see critters in dense brush like this. But with the thermal camera, you can spot anything warm-blooded pretty easily. Okay, oh, for example, right there, I don't know if we can see that with the camera, I think there's a deer right there. Oh, I think it bounced off before I could focus on it. Now, I should say I don't think you're legally allowed to hunt with one of these, but that probably varies on jurisdiction, so check your local laws before you go using one of these in the woods on a hunting expedition. This thing is great for finding heat and insulation leaks outdoors as well. I'm looking at our little tool shed here at Sandland, and you can clearly see the structure on the thermal camera, and you can pretty easily see where any air is escaping from inside. And if we had a heater running inside, you could easily see where any hot air would be escaping, and we could use that to beef up the insulation if we needed to. Here's another great example of how you can evaluate insulation on a wood frame building using a thermal camera. We're looking at the other side of the shed at Sandland, and if you look closely you can see some vertical lines on the outside of the wall. Those are actually heat reflections from the 2x4s inside the wall. So we're seeing the exact thermal properties of this structure. Before I wrap up this review, I wanted to return to a feature that I kind of glossed over before, the visible light camera on here. So if we go into our view mode setting, we can select between infrared, fuse, picture in picture, visible, and then there's this alignment setting. And I think what alignment does is if you had your camera in a fixed location, the two lenses are slightly off, so your thermal picture 
is not necessarily going to line up exactly. Now I have to say, even without alignment or calibration, the fuse mode does a pretty good job of automatically aligning the two images. So as Donnie moves, it tries to line up the thermal image of him with the visible image. Now one problem or complaint I have about the Viver thermal camera is the video mode. So when you squeeze this trigger button once, it takes a picture. Now if you hold down the trigger button, it starts recording. You'll notice at the bottom of the screen there, there's a timer going. And if you squeeze the trigger again, that video stops. Now, the problem I have is it saves in this weird format, uh, .h264. I can't view that with anything. My computer can't read it. My editing software can't read it. I don't have a way to view an H.264 video. I'm not even really sure what that format is. Donnie's still trying to help with the wrap-up of this video. So to wrap this up, I'd say I'm pretty happy with the Viver SC240M thermal camera. It has a lot of cool features. It has a very intuitive user interface. It was really handy to use in our underground operation. The image quality and the frame rate look really good. It was great for going outdoors and looking for wildlife. It was very fast to switch scales and respond to changing temperature in the environment. And all around, I think the performance was great. As far as any downsides to it, they were mostly minor. It does take a little bit longer to boot up than some other thermal cameras I've played with. The video recording format is unusable for me. I wish they had used some kind of standard file format for that. The size is a little bulky and clunky, but again, it's designed more for industrial use, for business use, than for the casual home user. But that bulky, rubberized housing is exactly what you'd want on a job site or field work working underground, working in an industrial area, working in a factory, working outside. I think it could take a fair amount of bumps and scrapes and still keep working just fine. The overall quality and design of it seemed very good, even right down to the box it came in, and it was really nice of Viver to include that carrying case. Since this thing is a little bit bigger and doesn't necessarily fit in your pocket, it's nice to have that carrying case included. Again, I'd like to thank Viver for sending me the thermal camera to review. I think I might set this one aside specifically for use out at Sandland, where I don't necessarily want to take something cheaper and smaller and more prone to damage. This one's going to be great for lugging around in our tunnels, checking out any airflow issues, any heating issues, uh, checking out if our tools are overheating, things like that. I think it's going to be a great benefit to our Sandland dig project. Hopefully this has been a useful review for everyone. I'll throw all the links and whatnot that Viver sent me down in the description so you can go check out their page, uh, look at this thermal camera or some of their similar products, and pick one up for yourself. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.